Section 2.4 is entitled More About Linear Equations. Another right way to write the equation of a line is in point-slope form, and that looks like this. y minus y1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x1, where m is the slope and x1, y1 is a point on the line. And in this equation, the plain old y and the plain old x stay x and y. Let's take a look at an example here. So a line passes through the point negative 1, 3 and has a slope of negative 2 thirds. What is the point slope form of the equation of the line? So point slope is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, and this is my x1, this is my y1, and this is my m. So we just need to plug those in. So that's going to become y minus y1, which is 3, is equal to m, which is 2 thirds, times x minus, minus a negative 1, I'm going to write as x plus 1. And that is point slope form. It's kind of a useful uh, form because just by looking at it, obviously you can see the slope right here, which is 2 thirds, and I can identify a point on the line, negative 1, 3, and with that information, that's actually enough information to graph the line. Here's another example. A line passes through the points 5, 1, and 7, 9. What is the equation of the line in point slope form? So the first thing I need to do is find the slope. So slope is, remember, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or 8 over 2, or my slope is 4. And then my formula is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And actually, there are two possible answers to this problem, because I actually have two points. I mean, if I use the point 5, 1, I have y minus 1 is equal to 4, which is my slope, times x minus 5. Or if I use my point 7, 9, I have y minus 9 is equal to 4 times x minus 7. And so both of those are completely acceptable answers. And you might say, so how can I have two different uh, equations but it be the same line? Actually, if you were to take that and distribute and move the, um, the y1 to the other side, basically put it into slope-intercept form, you would get exactly the same equation. Another way to write the equation of a line is in standard form, and that is ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are integers, that is, they are positive or negative whole numbers, and both a and b are not zero. a can be zero, or b can be zero, but they both can't be zero. Here's an example. Write the equation of the line y equals 2 fifths x minus 3 in standard form. So I need to, first of all, what's jumps out at me is the fact that I have a fraction in there. So I think I would like to start by getting rid of that fraction. And to do that, some call it fraction busting, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by the denominator of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply by 5 and distribute 3 times. So that's going to give me 5y equals, now here's the cool part, this 5 cancels with the 5 in the denominator, 2x minus 15. Now I'm actually pretty close to um, standard form. I'm just going to subtract a 2x on each side. And that is one possible answer. I've also seen some people that say they really want a, which is the coefficient of x, to be positive. So if you do that, I would multiply this whole thing by negative 1, and I get 2x minus 5y equals 15. According to this textbook, either one of those is acceptable. Um, just be careful in case your teacher asks you or says, makes a point of saying that a, the coefficient of x, has to be a positive number. Here's a summary from your textbook. Different ways that you can write the equation of a line. Uh, we saw slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. That's particularly useful if you know the slope and the y-intercept. Point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is good if you know the slope of the line and any point on the line, or if you know two points, and then you can use that to find the slope. And then standard form, ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and 
actually integers, and both a and b cannot be zero. So one cool thing about the uh, standard form is that when the line is written in that form, it's pretty easy to graph using the x and y intercepts. Remember, for the x-intercept, we're going to have an x value here, and your y is going to be 0. And for the y-intercept, we're going to have a 0 for your x and a number for your y. So basically, we're using 0. It's really cool. It's going to be easy to graph. So here we have. Um, it asks us what are the intercepts of the line 4x plus 3y equals 12 and then graph the line. One really easy way to do this is let's just make a tiny little table here and I'm going to let x equal 0 and I'm going to let y equal 0 and then I'm going to figure out what the corresponding point is. So when x is 0 in this equation this whole 4x thing goes away. I have 3y equals 12 so y is equal to 4. When y is equal to 0 3y goes away, I have 4x equals 12, and x is equal to 3. So my y-intercept is the point 0, 4, and my x-intercept is the point 3, 0. Now to graph this line, I just have to graph those two points. Here's my y-intercept, the point 0, 4. Here's my x-intercept, the point 3, 0, and then just connect those two points. I kind of like that. Okay, here's an example. A word problem. The cost of a taxi ride depends on the distance traveled. You paid $8.50 for a three-mile ride. Your friend paid $18.50 for an eight-mile ride. Write and graph an equation that models this situation. So, in this case, my dependent variable is going to be the distance and my, I'm sorry, my, yeah, my independent variable is going to be distance and my dependent variable is going to be cost because the cost of the ride depends on how far I traveled. So to do this, I'm just going to create a couple sets of ordered pairs. So I went three miles and it cost me $8.50. My friend went eight miles and it cost him $18.50. Given that information, I can find the slope because that's basically two points. So my slope is going to be 18.5 minus 8.5 over 8 minus 3 or 10 over 5. So the slope is 2. Now to write an equation, I'm going to use, I'm going to start with point slope form. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, and I think I'm going to use the um, the smaller value here. I'll use my first point here. So y minus 8.5 is equal to 2 times x minus 3. I could leave it like that. I think I'm going to put it into a slope intercept form. So to do that, let's distribute the 2 and then let's add, oops, that should be 8.5. Let's add 8.5 to both sides. So y equals 2x plus 2.5. So that would be a, an equation that models this situation. And now let's graph it. My y-intercept is 2.5, so that would be right about here. And my slope is 2, so that means I need to move up 2. So 1, 2, and write 1, something like that. Okay, It's not that hard to graph halves. Don't be afraid of them, just go for it. Or up two and write one. Now, why would I not go down two and left one? Well, if my um, my x, basically my independent variable is distance, so this is my distance, and this is my cost, um, I'm not gonna go negative distance. So I'm only gonna go in this direction here. So this would be a graph of the cost of the taxi ride. Actually, it probably would have been more accurate if I had a, a graph that had just this first quadrant right, right here. Okay. Okay, so here's a, a, a little table out of your textbook talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. The slopes of parallel lines are equal. 
and this does not apply to vertical lines. So you'll see that, you know, and that kind of makes sense. They have the same slope. They have the same slopiness. The slopes of perpendicular lines are going to be negative reciprocals of each other. So in other words, if you were to multiply their slopes, you would get a negative 1. An example of this might be, let's say, the slope of one line is 3 fourths, and the slope that's perpendicular to that is going to be a negative 4 thirds. So it's the reciprocal, and it's the opposite sign. Let's take a look at a couple examples here. Number one, what is the equation of each line in slope intercept form? So we need the equation of the line that is parallel to the line y equals 5x plus 4 and that passes through the point negative 2, 1. So if they're going to be parallel, they're going to have the same slope. Because parallel lines have the same slope. So the slope I'm going to use is 5 and the point I'm going to use is negative 2, 1. So I can use point slope form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And here's a little hint. If you haven't f uh, memorized that formula yet and you feel like you need to do it, have it memorized, every time you use it, write it down. So y minus 1 equals 5 times x minus a negative 2. And I could leave it like that, but most of the time we see it written in, oh, it, oh, it did say, oh, in slope-intercept form, so we do need to do that. So y minus 1 equals 5x plus 10, and adding 1 on each side, y equals 5x plus 11. And as you can see, both of those lines do have the same slope. And our last example here, we need the equation of the line that is perpendicular to y equals negative 2x plus 3 fourths. Don't be freaked out by the 3 fourths. That's the y-intercept. We're not going to use that. And has the same y-intercept as x plus 3y equals 12. Okay, so the slope of this line right here is negative 2, but I need the perpendicular slope. I need the slope of the line that's perpendicular to that, so the opposite reciprocal of that is going to be 1 half. That's the slope I'm going to use. And it needs to have the same y-intercept as this line right here. So in other words, when x equals 0, what is y? And this is really easy to do. So when x equals 0, 3y equals 12, or y is equal to 4. So that's my y-intercept. So my y-intercept is going to be 4. Using those two bits of information, write the equation of the line. y equals 1 half x plus 4. And that's the equation we're looking for. So in this section, we took a look at a little more information about linear equations. Um, we talked about point-slope form. Yes, we talked about point-slope form. Standard form did a nice little review of the different ways to write equations of the lines, of lines. Saw how to graph using standard form and talked about how to find the equations of parallel and perpendicular lines.